right episode 15 so before I install anything into the um, hull I also recommend you do this even if you do purchase your shafts and um, stuffing tubes etc is just to make sure that things are absolutely dead straight especially if you're doing a solid shaft installation you can see I've got this shaft mounted in the um, in the chuck on that end on this end yeah I've got it running in line with a uh, what we call a live center and you can see the shaft is 100% straight accurate and running true so that's okay to be installed as important as the uh, shaft is to be straight so is the stuffing tube don't take it for granted that these brass tubes are 100 percent straight i mean there's a lot of handling by the time they get to you so just also make sure that your stuffing tube assembly is absolutely 100 percent true before you install it into your board right so to make sure that when i bond the mounting plate in place it's 100 percent true to the um, to the output shaft um, stuffing tube I must also make sure that the coupling is running 100% true on the actual motor output shaft this is obviously just the second hand motor that I use to do these installations but it's to get the installation right once the installation is right it's easy for the user just to drop the motor in take the motor out and everything's lined up perfectly there's no alignment issues after this is done properly okay so we're going to start off with our uh basic uh, mounting plate, motor mounting plates you can see here I've had these slots laser cut just for accuracy and convenience it just saves me a bit of time and ensures me the accuracy and to show you that the way I've designed this is once once this mounting plate is installed in the board it's just going to be a case of dropping it right down to where it fits snug and tightening it up you're not going to have to worry about setting it left or right or up and down it's going to have one position boom that's where the motor is going to go Fasten up your studs and you'll know that it's aligned true to the drive shaft that's been installed. So we're trying to keep it simple for easy maintenance, uh, switching out of motors. Right, so to get this installation started, just a quick chat about the motor. I use the uh, 3650 size motor, which is basically 336 is 36 millimeters the diameter of the motor, 50 is the length of the motor. Um, we could have a discussion all day about the various motors and the outputs. I've just found from experience this size of motor serves well. The actual weight of the motor is good for this size of board. The KV range, um, I used to do the 2930 motors when we ran uh, mostly three cells, but now that I've stepped the boards up to four cells, I'm supplying it with a 2450 KV range. So you can run a two cell, three cell or four cell on this motor. Uh, you just play around with your prop size and you can set your timing. On four cell you can run at um, zero degree timing. So on three cell you can go to seven degrees and if you're running two cell you can step it up uh, right up to uh, 15, even 21 degrees. Um, but uh, th that's all preference. Um, if you're gonna be strictly four cell you could change this motor out maybe for a 2000 kV, same size. And if you really wanted to, um, as I've done with one of my own boards, you can still carve away uh, quite a bit over here and run a, say, a 60 length motor if you want to. Um, but for all intents and purposes, I've found that this size motor works absolutely fine. So based on that, um, and you're going to make your own selection for your own board, whatever board it is you're building and size. But based on that, um, not forgetting that we have a water jack that goes on this motor. Don't do this installation without your water jacket because you might just find when you put your water jacket on, it doesn't fit. So with the water jacket on, around the motor, position your motor in the board and try and get it to lie in the pot area um, as far forward as possible. The more forward uh, your motor is, the less of a thrust angle you're gonna have. If your motor's sort of right back here, it's gonna tilt down and you can have more of a thrust angle lifting the nose of the board out the water and perhaps creating that dreaded porpoise so the more forward you can have your motor the lower your thrust angle and the better it's going to be for your board to plane on the surface of the water so with that in mind always giving yourself a little bit of room for for error as we say small little marks roughly where our, where our mounting plate's going to go 
and then just with using a little piece of cardboard to start with you can work out the shape that your mounting plate needs to be cut to the profile it's quite easy just to shape a piece of cardboard uh, that'll fit in there nicely it's, it needs to be accurate it doesn't have to be uh, to the absolute millimeter because we're going to be using an epoxy um, to tack it in and then we're going to be putting an epoxy widget on either side of about five millimeters so uh, a little bit of gap here and there is not going to be uh, the end of the world. If you're working with this plate mounting system, the lower we can have it in the pod, the also the less the um, thrust angle is going to be. So first thing we want to do is just mark this and give yourself about two millimeters. Give yourself about two millimeters from the base of the water jacket, just so that you've got some gap between the water jacket and the base of the pod. Making sure you're working from the absolute center line. to do now is just take a little cheek clamp. You can see here the stainless steel shaft extends by about 10 millimeters and I just put a clamp on here just to hold that in position. Holding the um, mounting plate in place, I just like to rotate the system just to make sure that it's feeling true, it's not moving around or anything from the prop side. You can see that it's all running really nice and true. Okay, so now we can mark where our mounting plate's gonna be going. And what we need to do in this surface area of Yana is take the little grinder and just grind it away because with the application of the flow coat to be used inside you, there'll be a a wax layer and uh, if we try to epoxy straight onto that wax layer we would have no adhesion so we're going to have to just grind away here, clear an area on either side of this line just so that when we apply our epoxy um, fillet that we get good adhesion there. Okay you can see a healthy sanding away of the layer of uh, flow coat breaking through the uh, wax layer through to the raw resin so that we can get a real good adhesion with our epoxy fillet on either side of the of the um, aluminium mounting bracket. We'll wipe with acetone. Now I'm going to prepare the mounting uh, for bonding and to get a neat bond I'm just going to tape up going to mark around the peripheral of the mounting plate the size of the epoxy widget we want about five millimeters five six mil see it marked there I'm just going to cut it away the blade okay so you can see our masking tape allowing for this area over here to be bonded I'm not going to get glue all over this side nor on this side. And what I want to do now, I'm just going to roughen up this aluminium on both sides as well so that we get a good bond with the epoxy on that as well. Okay, you can see the alley is a little bit roughed up there. I'm going to place that on the motor now. And we're going to start off by just tacking this mounting bracket in place so that we can then remove the drive shaft in the motor and apply the widget of epoxy on either side. So we're just going to be applying a bead of epoxy to the edge of this mounting plate just so that when we position it now we're going to literally be tacking it in place. 
And once that's cured, we're going to remove the motor, remove the drive shaft, and then we're going to be able to apply the widget of epoxy on either side. That's actually going to give this its bonded strength. We're just using a uh, five minute uh, quick set epoxy. Okay, when we got that in, position our drive shaft. Drive shaft uh, pegged in place at the back. Just rotate everything. Make it lined up nicely. So now we have the motor mounted to the mount plate being tacked in place. You can see the masking tape that's on the uh, mounting plate. That's going to just stop glue from getting all over the show when we put the widget of epoxy in the radius. You can see at the bottom here, I've got a little clamp just holding the drive shaft position right at the bottom so that we know it's in the right position. The drive shaft itself is still to be shortened. Once we got everything in place, we just leave that secure for now. While we've been waiting for the engine mount bracket, epoxy, tack epoxy, just to set itself, I went ahead and made up uh, our battery platform bracket from a flat plate, bent uh, through 90 degrees, profiled it to fit inside the pod. And uh, just to chat about these, um, both the engine mount bracket as well as the battery mount bracket also act as two ribs across our pod over here. I mean, if you think about it, it's quite a big expanse of pod here without too much uh, structural support inside. So what's nice about these brackets, not only do they have uh, functions other than, but they also act as ribs inside your pod to give it that extra strength. If we look at this uh, battery mount bracket here, first of all, it's got quite a big hole here, and that's for the drive shaft stuffing tube to come through and I don't mount the front end of this drive shaft at all. The back 60 millimeters is uh, submerged in an epoxy mount at the back and that's really the only part that's rigid of the stuffing tube so it ensures that for the slight vibration misalignment whatever you have in the front there you still got a bit of flex in your assembly here that can move around, no matter how small it is, you're gonna have a bit of flex. If we epoxy that and made it a rigid mount and the motor was just over here, you can have a very uh, rigid mounting and that's not gonna be good for your motor or the bearings. So effectively, our stuffing tube is actually floating in the front there, able to take up any slight movement that there is. In between the motor housing plates and this battery platform that the battery rests on, one of the areas where we have water seepage is through our drive shaft. As much as we um, grease up our drive shaft, there's always a little bit of uh, spillage and moisture that comes up. And this hole is left big enough so that that moisture that gathers here is trunked back through the inertia, the forward inertia of the board. And you'll see when I place this, there's a secondary area at the back here, which I like to call the sponge well. I put two sponges in there. And as the water goes back, it gets absorbed by the sponges and is retained in that sponge well area. So we're going to fit this bracket uh, much the same as we fitted the engine mount bracket. We're first going to tack it in place with some epoxy and then we're going to put a uh, epoxy fillet all the way around here. That's the battery platform. It's tacked in place. Masking tape is holding it there while it's curing see the structural strength that the ribs of both the battery platform and the motor mount bracket will add to the strength of the pod. The latter part of the pod inside here is going to have about 50-60 millimeters of solid epoxy. We've got a foam section in the front here so all in all even the structural strength of our pod is uh, impressive. We're just going to let that cure and then we're going to remove the motor, drive shaft and we're going to fill a widget of epoxy on either side of the mountings and that will be then set in place. So we got our 
mounting plate and our battery platform tacked in place. The epoxy is dried now. We've got masking tape in place. Keep it a nice neat installation. What we're going to do now, shape the stick up here with a radius on it. We're going to mix up some epoxy and we're going to apply a widget of epoxy around the radius of these mounting plates to secure the, the plates in place and hold them fast. Get it in there. Let it flow. Don't know how well you can see those widgets there. But he's going to get a closer look now. No. But once it kicks off, I'm going to remove the uh, masking tape. Just keeping the board vertical so the widget runs into the uh, corner radius. To get a closer look at the epoxy in the radius there, nice 5mm by 5mm all the way around. Right, so we have our battery platform, motor mounting plates, epoxied in place. Now it's down to fitting the um, servo tray. You can see here what I do is I drill a hole through the servo tray just to increase the contact area, roughen it up quite a bit on the bottom. That's going to get epoxied in place just over there. See how it's resting on part of the uh, motor mount bracket, just roughen up that surface. Server tray is bonded in place, you can see little holes here where the glue uses through. Right, so now we have the uh, mounting plate, battery platform, servo tray in place. We can move on to bonding the drive shaft in place permanently and then finish off our steering control tubing and our water intake and outlet tubing. And that'll be a wrap for the installation of the hardware.